Now, despite attempts to end the rift with the NYPD, Mayor de Blasio, he hasn't had much success on that front here. Now, first we saw officers turn their backs on the mayor as he entered a Brooklyn hospital after two uh, police officers were ambushed in their patrol car by a crazed gunman. As we know, officers Ramos and Lou died following that attack. Then police turned their backs to the uh, mayor. Um, in fact, uh, that was during uh, his address at Officer Ramos's funeral. Officers also uh, carried out the same silent protest at Officer Lou's funeral, even after warning from Brass not to do that during that event. Now, Police Commissioner Bratton, he spoke out against the protest, calling the move, among other things, disrespectful. I just don't understand it. I'm sorry that uh, I just do not understand that. What was the need in the middle of that ceremony to engage in a political action? The selfishness of that action, the selfishness of it. A funeral is not a place for that. Come demonstrate outside uh, City Hall, come demonstrate outside police headquarters, but don't put on your uniform and go to a funeral and uh, engage in a political a action. Now, Sergeant's Benevolent Association President Ed Mullen says the mayor is the one um, who ought to be saying sorry, and he's not going to change any position he has to on the police. Mullen saying, the truth of it is, this is something that can be fixed in 30 seconds with the mayor giving a public statement, something apologetic, followed by a gesture of goodwill so we can begin to trust him, end quote. Now, police officers have also been turning their backs on low-level crimes across the city. Uh, what was anecdotal is now at least uh, being confirmed. Late this afternoon, Police Commissioner Bratton, in fact, acknowledged what many of us have been saying for a while when you look at the data, that officers purposefully slowed arrests and summons after the two officers were killed. And again, we're not talking about uh, in just marginal numbers. When you're talking about certain quality of life crimes, some of them are off by more than 90% from this same time last year. Now, last week, the number of arrests across the city, as we said, dropped to 2,400, and that's down from more than 5,400 uh, compared to the total number of arrests during the same time a year ago. And according to the New York Police Department's own data, parking and driving relation citations, as I said, down more than 90 percent. Fewer people being booked in the city jails. 575 new inmates uh, entered uh, jail during the week of Christmas. That's down from about 1,000 from the same week for the last three years as a frame of reference. All this said, earlier this week, PBA President Pat Lynch had this to say to NPR when asked if, in effect, there was an arrest slowdown. Absolutely not. What you have now is police officers being assassinated, so we had to redouble our efforts to make sure that police officers are safe so that we can keep the public safe. That means we have to double up on jobs. Now, it seems that... Mr. Lynch may be backtracking a little bit on that one. The Daily News says that he's now reportedly telling police to make more arrests. Uh, in their story, the news uh, says that they, he believes they ought to go back to at least 50 percent of what they used to do. I want to bring on my panel in this. And uh, we've got Bill O'Reilly. He's a Republican strategist. He served as Rob Astor and a spokesman in his two successful runs for the Westchester County Executive seat. Dominic Carter, political journalist and author. Shelley Mayer, Democratic New York State Assembly, representing the city of Yonkers in Albany. And Andrew Whitman, our senior political correspondent. And, and, and Shelley, I'll start with you, which is... Wait a second. There was also some accounts where some of the union reps are saying, well, Bratton ought to be careful um, or we're going to start turning our back on him. We have a structure in our military, in our police, where we have civilian command. Officers, as far as I understand, don't decide which, uh, which things they deem as uh, worth, process, worth actually making arrests on and which ones aren't. There's command, there's structure, and there's protocol. And for me, I understand some of the anger directed towards the mayor, but you can't have a police department or a military or any security apparatus where rank and file get to make up their own rules as they go along. We've said this before, but I, I think at some point here, somebody's got to say enough's enough. Well, I think that ordinary New Yorkers say enough's enough. And many of them, whether they're sympathetic with the police or sympathetic with the mayor or really don't care about that, they are entitled to what a police department is supposed to do. And I think it's unacceptable to elect to slow down on the job. And we're not talking about a one day little action over mm -hmm. some grievance. We are talking about a substantial reduction in 
doing their job in policing a city. And I hate to bring in France, but we have a democracy that works because we have a system of law and justice, and we're incredibly dependent on our police departments to make that happen. It's not always perfect, and it can be messy. They need to step up and do their job. It's absolutely unacceptable. And I, it, it's either going to change in the next day or two, or I agree with you, the, the situation is going to unravel even further. Take the politics out, Bill, right? Uh, forget whether you love it, you hate de Blasio, okay, and I can have a feeling where you fall on that one, but you can't have cops, in effect, defying both the commissioner, forget the mayor, the commissioner, okay? Um, you know, they can't say, oh, you know what, do 50% of the arrests, or don't arrest anybody, let's make a point here. I mean, right, I, I mean, you can't, and I think you, you saw Pat Lynch very carefully walk that line and deny that that occurred. It's tough to... Well, it's he tough denied to, it, and he then reportedly, it. if you believe the Daily News, and I'm hearing from other folks as well, that he said, make about half of what you used to. Yeah. Who is Pat Lynch? You can't be... You Pat can't. Lynch isn't elected. The mayor got elected. Whether we like his policy on uh, broken windows, stop and frisk, whatever you want to call it or not, the point of the matter is the police are civil servants, Right. And I get it. They're human beings. They have a really hard job. People simplify it, like uh, talking heads like me here. That all said, you don't get to decide which crimes you feel like, you know, uh, observing or not, you know? I, I, I mean, I, I, I think they wanted to make a point, clearly, and, and I think they've made that point. And if, if it continues, they're going to lose the support of the public, as the Assemblywoman said. Um, I think there were a lot of people that were, that were rooting on the police a little bit. I was one of them. But I think I think the time is now it's it's over, and and I think that's right. In in looking at the Paris story, the NYPD has kept the city safe, New York City safe for many many years after 9/11. They need to get back in the game, and um, you know I would I would like to see the mayor say something conciliatory to the police. I don't think he's going to do it, but maybe the police have to take the first step and start to get back in the game. It, there's a political aspect always to this, Dominic. But, always. But we heard before, hey, maybe Bill Clinton, in fact, uh, the aforementioned Mr. Mullins, the head of the Sergeant's PBA, said, well, maybe he can help here and That's get media. I know that. It's but, outrageous. But I'll tell you what's not ridiculous. Governor Cuomo has made it pretty clear to some folks here that he's looking to put his imprimatur here on trying to uh, reset police policy. And you know um, the police unions would welcome any other face other than the mayor to be sitting at the table, too. But, Richard... Isn't the Blasio got to be careful here if he's not careful somebody but, else but is going to sit in the room? But, Richard, th this is reach reaching a stage of outrageous. You know that I, I like Ed Mullins and Pat Lynch, but you're not elected. You don't decide who's going to rule on something or, or the way it's going to go. I mean, think about what we're saying now. And I want you to... Think, take a look at this. So the Eric Garner case happens, and it's on video. And it goes around the world, and everyone says it's awful, and then there's no indictment. And the unions are upset because the mayor and people were protesting a non-indictment. What about the public's First Amendment right if they're not happy with something? And the mayor, I, I know we may not agree with what he said about his son, but he was trying to stop a riot. And there would have been a riot. There would have been a riot in New York City. The same way you had in Ferguson, you would have had it here in New York City if you didn't have somebody like de Blasio saying, they didn't, they, New York City doesn't have enough cops to stop the anger that's out there. A lot of angry people. And so with de Blasio, he was trying to extend an olive branch to communities of color to say, hey, listen, with my black son, we have to teach him the same thing. I'm not saying I necessarily agree with the mayor of New York saying that, but you already know as a black child, that's a, that's a ritual for every black child growing up, do's and don'ts with police officers. So I, I don't know. I don't know how you solve this one. We've been talking about this for a couple weeks now, Andrew. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. at a certain point, it's not just, you know, Listen, for me, the optics don't look right. Every time somebody's got to deliver the more poignant statement or the more determined statement, the police commissioner, in effect, is his front guy for it. Now, whether that's fair or not, that's how it looks and that's how it sounds. The mayor's <coughs> got to fight his own battles here for a while, and I think he hopes and wishes this thing's going to go away. It's not going to go away. I think you guys are right that the police are starting to overplay their hand, don't look right, but 
we never know what's going to happen in a news cycle 24 hours from now. God forbid we saw two other officers shot. Something else could happen. The mayor has to make it clear he's no longer asking. He's telling them. Well, they either make these arrests here or the commander's going to put somebody else in different positions. First of all, I think, and I've been saying, that the NYPD has been mishandling this for weeks now as we've been discussing it. Uh, and yes, I think de Blasio needs to step up a little bit more than he has. But keep in mind, that press conference where we took the soundbite of, of Bill Bratton, Mayor de Blasio also said something very similar. The mayor was, the, I'm sorry, the, the mayor was not as strong as not the police. As strong, but that's not, why we not chose as strong, that but, fight. Yeah. But there, you have the police union saying, well, if he would just be a little conciliatory, then maybe. So he's trying to have it both ways to a certain degree. Yes, he has to step up and do something. Look, these are all public officials, and there is blame to go around for everybody. The mayor and the police commissioner take a little responsibility on this, as well as the police officers. I think the police officers have been, frankly, despicable in what they've done in the protests at the at the funerals and the and the slowdown on arrest, putting people's public safety at jeopardy. I mean, for the for the There's sake of the more quality of life stuff, but I'm it's, I, I'll it's, grant it's, you. And I just I, I, yeah, because we've been looking for solutions for a long time. I, I, I town hall. You want to air these things out? You want to get this dialogue going? That's fine. But if you're putting the public's in harm's way, this conversation needs to be in public view. But they've and done so that already. Public, we? They've had publicly, already a couple publicly closed door in meetings, front of haven't they? Where well, people can respond. It's not doing the they trick. They had the one closed door meeting. I think that we are on the right track. It is the politics of ordinary voters who say, there's a guy, I saw it myself, cops sitting in their cars on their phones. They, that never was allowed before. I was talking to one of my police officer friends in the office. You're not allowed to be on your phone the whole time. I saw it last week, police officers sitting there on their phones. Ordinary people who are dependent on police officers, not only for their sense of security, but for actual activity, are going to say, de Blasio, we don't like you, we didn't vote for you, but you got to make this department How do much? the work. How much, even if it's a little, is this about the contracts? A lot about the contracts, in my opinion. And so what, go ahead. What, 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 one of the things that's going to make it more difficult going forward is that in Albany this year, there's going to be a, a great press for changes in the criminal justice system yes, and, and in the contracts. So you're going to have one driving force out of the city in Albany and the assembly in particular um, and I mean that's that's going to dominate a lot of the Does headlines. Does that mean Albany's anti-police? I mean, if if De Blasio is is suggesting police reforms, no, he's anti-police. No. If the assembly suggests it, are you anti-police? No. Is the governor anti-police no, if he I, supports it? I've made this point repeatedly. These are not mutually exclusive conversations. We need to improve policing. There's no question about it. Many smart people in the world of policing agree, and we need to respect and give tremendous honor to our to our police officers. Why these two are mutually exclusive mm -hmm. is really something, it's a conversation we never should have been at this point, but we're there, we gotta get out of it. Yeah. I think only ordinary citizens will get us out of it, because I, I think the police department is overplaying its Free union. piece of advice, but Mr. Mayor, don't make it seem to the public that Bratton's fighting your fights for you anymore. You gotta stand up to this, or there's a certain guy in Albany that's gonna fill this void sooner than you think. All right, head over to Facebook and Twitter and sound off on our question here tonight as it relates to the NYPD and the de Blasio feud, who do you think has gone too far? Now, when we come back, we're going to take a look at news out of Albany and at Governor Cuomo's political forecast for the second term in office. Got an idea what's going to be in the state of the state here and what lies ahead in 2015 in the Empire State. Stay with us.